And now I'd like to introduce Andreas Mershin from MIT, who is uh, the um, person in charge of the Molecular Frontiers Inquiry Prize. So he will introduce this year's winners of the prize. Thank Thanks. you, Magdalena. So um, a couple of words first. We are here to announce the winners of the Molecular Frontiers Inquiry Prize. And we are very lucky because today we also have one of the finalists, and uh, she will be up here in a minute. And uh, that almost never happens. This is an international prize where we don't know the winners until yesterday. And we know the finalists only a week before we meet here. And people apply from all over the world. So uh, we'll get there in a minute. But uh, you may want to know why do we have an inquiry prize? Our question is important. I found this uh, that says that if I had an hour to solve a problem, I'd spend 55 minutes on defining the right question. And then just five minutes would be enough to find the right answer. Does anybody know who said that? And it was our good old friend Einstein, who's full of quotes like this about curiosity. So um, are there really important uh, questions? Well, we have all these people saying that they're more important than answers. And uh, that got me thinking um, about things, including, uh, let's see, Voltaire here says that judge a man by his questions, not by his answers. And we have to modify this with molecular frontiers. We had a woman, too. This is no longer a game just for boys, OK? Science is for boys and girls. And um, Bono, uh, when he was talking about the, the world food problem and uh, poverty, uh, has an interesting quote where he says, we thought that we had the answers, but it was the questions we had wrong. And of course, Einstein again, who says that he had no special talents, only passionately curious. And the important thing is not to stop questions. So why this emphasis on questions? Clearly, they're important for science. This is how it all starts. We're all basically trying to feed our curiosity. But uh, is there any ta tangible benefit? Can you make a buck? Can you do anything for humanity just by, by being curious? And the answer is a resounding yes. I took the most complex machine ever built by mankind, which is CERN, and found out that it is the answer to, it's not even the answer yet, it is the quest for the answer that was, uh, to a question that was asked two and a half thousand years ago by Democritus and Lycippus, and they just asked, well, is matter divisible forever? And because we don't have a good answer, we have created CERN with ATLAS and, L and um, CMS and all the other fantastic experiments that went before LHC. And in creating this, we created the internet. The web browser came out of, uh, out of CERN. A million different technologies came up, including how to fast and quickly able to, uh, be able to sample data, fast RAM memories, a lot of computational um, software and algorithms. So in asking good questions, in fact, you are uh, moving the world forward. It's a, a, a power for progress, and it creates real tangible wealth in addition to satisfying your curiosity. And in fact, questions, if you notice them, they're good questions are much longer lived than answers. As soon as you start getting good answers, what happens is instantly more complexity gets generated, and you start asking a more complex question. For instance, when we asked, is the speed of light uh, the limit? And we understood about speed of information. Uh, being uh, having a fundamental limit. Then we asked, why is that? Then all the wonderful quantum mechanics questions uh, are starting to be. So what is really curiosity? And interestingly, we learned that humans and animals both learn by play, and play is motivated by curiosity. And they learn, and they also forage for food. And play is curiosity at work. And there's people who are doing this for a living. Uh, Bo Lotto has a lab for curiosity where he employs children to help him and ask good scientific questions. Uh, Jürgen Schmidtpuber, sorry, has made machines that are programmed to actually ask original questions. So curiosity can be algorithmic. Uh, molecules can, in a sense, ask questions. In the case of DNA, we have circuits now that can be uh, programmed into, in bacteria that will ask questions and become logic gates. And even naturally occurring bacteria will ask questions. They will make a model about the world. They will ask a question. You can train them Pavlo in Pavlovian conditioning. You can do associative memory in single-celled organisms that don't have a single neuron in them, not even a cytoskeleton. It's all done with DNA logic gates. And uh, then what about curiosity in humans? Well, it turns out curiosity is an aversive condition. It's like an itch. They put people in fMRI machines, and they looked at the blood flows in the brain. And it turns out that the most interesting questions, the, one, the ones that engaged the person most passionately, were the ones that were creating the most uncertainty, the most of the brain was being activated, the blood flow was going everywhere, there was uncertainty about the answer. And interestingly, the centers that were being activated the most were the same as for hunger, and for itches, and for drug addictions. So when you're curious, it's an aversive condition, you're trying to scratch that itch, 
to get away from being curious. And then, of course, usually when you scratch it and you're satisfied, instantly what happens if you're a scientist, you have better questions and then the cycle never stops. So um, the uh, Molecular Frontiers Inquiry Prize is unique. It's the first prize in the history of the world that was awarded for questions. We always had prizes for answers, for projects, for this, that. It is unique because it was the first. Since then, we have been copied by many organizations. If you Google now, there's plenty of prizes given for questions, and, but we were the ones to recognize it at first, so we're very proud of that. Uh, we don't need any achievement or access to a lot of resources. You still need a computer to be able to submit your question, but it's, not, um, it's pretty democratic. It is empowering. We're trying to make sure that uh, the young people are heard by the uh, people on top of their, of their fields. I hope the young people here and on the internet tell me that you know, we were heard today because some of our questions filtered all the way through to our eminent panelists here. And you can short circuit the whole deal with going to college and then going to grad school and then doing a postdoc before you can talk to a Nobel Prize winner. Okay, so I think we've, we've managed to shortcut that distance. So um, we also were very careful to base this on the uh, uh, Nobel Prize as far as how, who gets awarded. So the process is secret, but we have a, our panel of eminent scientists who decide which were the most inquisitive, most interesting questions. It doesn't matter if your question won or not, it was heard by somebody very, very um, uh, gifted in, their, in, in, the, in the professional uh, art of asking questions, which is what we call science. And also importantly, we based part of it on the Olympic Games, which is we give equal uh, number of prizes to girls and boys. And that is to motivate and to make sure that people understand that their curiosity is innate, has, no, uh, has nothing to do with academic achievement or anything else, has nothing to do with socioeconomic factors, it should be recognized as, um, as the same as uh, athletic or musical ability or anything else that we usually recognize as a skill that can be honed, so is uh, inquisitiveness. So anybody under 18 can enter. You can enter up to five questions per year. You can win up to once per lifetime. Okay. Now, the, the, the prize is structured exactly like a mini science project. First, the entrant comes up with a question. For instance, why are water molecules so important or something else? Then they tell us why they think this question is important. They have to tell us where they have they looked for the answer. So we nudge them to go ask their teachers, uh, look on the internet, look in the libraries. Uh, then we ask them why did the answers you find were unsatisfactory to you? Can you suggest how to find a better answer? And for the last part, and this is important, although we don't use this to judge the questions, we do, do it to communicate to the people something important and to ourselves some information. We ask them, what do you think the answer or the quest for the answer will do to you, your immediate community, and the world at large? Because asking questions is a powerful game, and you can do powerful stuff when you're trying to find the answers to these things. So you have to be careful also to understand what, what you're going with this. So what do the people win? They win a medal, which has the world's second most famous molecule on one side, uh, seen from an unusual axis. Anybody can guess what this is? And on the uh, other side, we have an exclamation point made out of a carbon nanotube and a buckyball. They also get a calligraphed certificate uh, printed on the same paper as the Nobel certificate, the real Nobels. Uh, and the calligraphy is done by Liz Ball, who is our artist in residence and who also did the fantastic science at art presentation earlier. It is, um, has been uh, helped this year very much by Liz Ball, Bert Lauren, Martin Hammerson, and uh, Helen Ledmere, who uh, allow us to be able to scale this and to have hundreds of uh, entries whittled down to only a few for the uh, eminent scientists to judge. And at MIT, we've had the satellite location this year where all this is being transmitted to, and I'd like to thank Chris Love and Thomas Duval for, the, for their help. Uh, very importantly, I would like to, help, to thank our sponsor. These prizes cost money because in addition to the medal, they also include an iPad 2, which is engraved with the molecules, molecule, uh, Molecular Frontiers logo. So I would very much like to thank KG Nagano from 3DM for their generous uh, support of the prize, and I'd like us to give them a hand without the money, no prize. <laughs> So uh, now, to announce the winners this year, we thought we'd uh, do something different. So I'll have five young people here who have played in the prize and have won various things to be able to come here. And uh, four of them have, been, um, uh, have, have won something to be here. And the fifth one is a new participant. She, she is in the finalists. So I'd like to first uh, bring up uh, Felicia. And she was a winner in the 2000 and... Nine prize. Tell us what your question was and uh, read us the, um, the winners. Uh, 
Well, my question was, uh, what is the origin of uh, chemical chirality? So read us two. There's five people, so there's ten um, winners, so we'll read two each. Okay, so why do some people have a clear sense of morality, of what's right and wrong, but some people don't? By Shu Wei Tan from Malaysia. So this is our first winner for, um, for this year from uh, Malaysia. Let's give him a hand. One more. Are there phenomena such as black holes or wave function collapse which destroy information about their prior states? Uh, of Perak Keng from Malaysia as well. Yeah, the um, yes, he's next one. So next is uh, Liam Timms who wants something. Tell us what you want and why you're here. Um, well, the call went out for some students from my college to attend this conference and uh, my associate, Phoebe, and I um, were chosen by our faculty to receive money and come to be able to see the beautiful city of Stockholm and get to see all of the amazing talks. Okay, so give us the next two. We can make up there. Okay. So the next question is, how can a non-living chemical. Chem chemical compounds generate self-replicating complex life forms? And from Abby Pakiri uh, from Singapore. Next is, can diseases be diagnosed by sniffing? By Yang Yong Zheng Zin uh, of Malaysia. I apologize for pronouncing it. I'm Phoebe, also from Dickinson College, and our next winner asked the question, is the creation of artificial self-conscious brains possible? And it's Yu Ruzian from Malaysia. And then switching to the girls. Oh, let's give them a hand. Switching to the girls, uh, Faith Chu asked, what makes some people more inquisitive than others? Uh, you, you will notice uh, a high concentration of winners from Singapore and Malaysia, and that is because we had a, a forum there, and the people paid a lot of attention. They had a lot of schools. So we were absolutely floored with the wonderful response we got from those two countries. So, uh, and it is reflected in how, how, how much they've won. And this should make everybody think, when you go back to your countries, please propagate this so we can have a little bit <laughs> better balance. But uh, go ahead, tell us where you oh, um, I'm Destiny, again. Um, I am here. I am being sponsored by a Rotary Club in the South Florida, where I'm from. And they're hoping to get more people on scholarship from different Rotary Clubs around the world. Lauren Simonson says, why does our body protect us from extraordinary pain, like the victims of the 2013 Boston Marathon bombing experienced, but not from chronic pain, such as extreme back pain and migraines? And Wan Lee says, why does music have the ability to convey emotion to humans? So, uh, uh, Timei is a uh, uh, first time you, you play here, here, right? Yeah. Okay, so th tell us the last couple of winners. Okay, so the next, next winning question is, what makes a person develop Empathy and how come some people don't have it by Rachel Rocha Shardy from the United States. And I hope this is not too embarrassing because we have a surprise. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, should I read it? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's your question. Oh, how come no other molecules are as important for living creatures on Earth as the water molecule? Okay, by me. <laughs> We tried to keep it a surprise for Tima. Did we manage or did you suspect it? No. Well, how do you feel? <laughs> You're not going to get your prize right this instant. We'll have to send it from MIT, sorry, but it will take a while. But, but at least I uh, think we can, we have a real live winner here. <laughs> this concludes the uh, presentation and uh, uh, I will, yeah, that's a nice picture to end it on. Uh, the last thing I'd like to say is for tomorrow and today, everything we do is webcast live, 
and we will have, uh, if you give this link to anybody, they can see you and they can uh, uh, post questions there. So anywhere in the world, they can watch this live and uh, communicate with us. So thanks very much again. Thank you very much for the panelists and the judges for yesterday for judging the, the prize. And I hope to see you tomorrow with some uh, wonderful questions. Goodbye.